Water contaminated with radioactive materials is building up inside the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Underground water has been seeping into the facility's basements. Tokyo Electric Power Company says storage tanks will be full by March. The utility considered treating the water and then releasing it into the sea, but strong opposition from the fishing industry forced it to postpone the decision. We already feel safer. Government officials in Fukushima have released some statistics people have been waiting for. For the first time, residents of some towns near the Fukushima Daiichi plant found out how much radiation they faced. Government officials are in the process of giving health checkups to all two million residents. They released the estimated external exposure levels of about 1,700 people from three municipalities designated as evacuation zones after the accident. The results do not include those working at the plant. They show some people were exposed to up to 15 millisieverts of radiation in the four months after the nuclear accident. The country's permissible exposure limit is one millisievert per year. 98% of those tested are estimated to have been exposed to less than five millisieverts. We already feel safer. Japan's health ministry has decided to begin conducting radiation checks on all food products for infants every three months. The move comes after a leading food company announced earlier this week that it, that it had found radioactive cesium in its powdered milk. The level of contamination found by Meiji Corporation was below the government safety limit but, and did not pose a health risk. Still, the company decided to voluntarily recall the product amid growing concerns among consumers. The health ministry says the checks will cover baby food and formula chosen randomly from store shelves. The health ministry has asked manufacturers to disclose information on their products. We'll also monitor the products to ensure they're safe. We already feel safer. Farmers in a coastal area hit by the March tsunami will build Japan's largest facility for growing vegetables without soil. The tsunami's seawater ruined one-third of farmland or about 1,800 hectares in the Sendai region. Farmers and agricultural corporations in the area plan to build a facility that uses liquid nutrients in water instead of soil. They hope to start operations in 2013. We already feel safer. Tepco says the former head of the Fukushima Daiichi plant has been diagnosed with esophageal cancer. According to the utility, doctors say it's very unlikely his disease was caused by radiation exposure. Masao Yoshida has led the efforts to stabilize the plant after the nuclear accident in March. The company relieved him from his post last week. We already feel safer. Yes, please. Um, so the, the issue of that um, particles can expose tissue to much higher level, levels of radiation than would be indicated by the total body radiation exposure. Are there epidemiologic studies that say that that then predicts risk um, as opposed to actually the risk prediction model based on, on uh, total body exposure? So the question is, is the uh, risk based on a hot particle exposure different from uh, that based on a total body exposure? The way they answer this question is we always say that if you compare like amounts of radiation, is the hot particle different from a total body? But are there epidemiologic, I mean, I know theoretically there are reasons to be concerned. The question is, is there epidemiologic? Yes, yeah, definitely want to go there. The, the important thing in that question is, is the, that little qualification of the same amount of radiation. Because a hot particle has a very long residence time, and because it exposes specific tissues for a, a long period compared to an external or, or a photon dose like gamma radiation, you tend to get a lot of concentrated radiation with a long residence time, and your total radiation exposure tends to be higher. When you measure, when you correct or normalize for that radiation exposure, when you artificially raise your external dose to the same as the hot particle, in fact, you find that the hot particle is a little less dangerous because your body acts as shielding. Your tissues where the hot particle is shield the rest of your body from that radiation. So the epidemiological studies show a slightly reduced dose. 
But you've added that huge fudge factor where you've, you've assumed that the external uniform dose was as big. And, and that's really hard to do with a short-term dose compared to the, the years you can have a, a hot particle in your body. So if you use that, that fudge factor, you can convince yourself that it's okay. But in real life, the hot particle tends to create a long-term exposure where total radiation goes up more than you would think just based on the, the, the size of the particle. Thank you very much. We already feel safer.